Hi, and welcome to Dimes Block of the Month. I'm PJ Wong, and I'll be guiding you through the block this month. I'm calling this the Handbag Block, and we're going to start with a piece of artwork that's already in your software, and we're going to modify it a little bit, and I'm going to show you a couple little tricks on how to do that. So this is an image of the block. This is the block in a six block layout using some fun little prints. And then here's an actual stitch out of the block. So, all right, let's get going. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with my block piecer. And when you open up your software, you'll see the My Inspiration Today page. And don't forget to download your free designs. I'm just gonna close that and I'm gonna open a new page and then I'm going to go up here to the block tool and the block that I want I'm starting with this candy basket block so it's under the foundation blocks foundation baskets so I'm choosing this and I'm gonna choose a custom size and I'm gonna make this block seven inches and I'm gonna say okay so here's our block so if we look back at our picture, you can see that I've altered the way that the handle is set up just a little bit. So it looks a little more like a handbag versus a basket. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. First of all, I'm going to expand over here in my sequence view. I'm going to start with the handles. So I actually want to start with the handle that's on the left hand side. So I've selected it from the artwork over here. I'm going to go to my shape tool and I'm just going to move this in and my snap to grid is on, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just pulling this over and I want this to actually straddle the center. So I'm just adjusting that artwork and it's snapping to the grid. So I'm going to now go to my other piece. And this piece is going to go up to here. This point I don't have to move at all. But then this point I'm going to move this in as well. So now I'm two segments in from each side. And then this is straddled. The left handle is straddling um, the center line here. All right. So now I'm going to have to adjust my other artwork. So I can select my artwork over here from the left. And I'm just going to drag the top one and again my snap to grid is on so it's going to snap into place. I need to add another point to get this over to here. So I'm going to right click and say add point and then I'm going to right click again and tell that to be a line so that I get a square corner. Okay, And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. I'm just going to drag this over. I'm going to add in a point and right click and tell that to be a line and then move this down. So one thing that I want to point out is that if we look at our centerpiece, if I can find it here, can you see how this, even though it doesn't look like it in the image here, this centerpiece is actually crossing the handles. If you were to leave it that way, you wouldn't be able to actually build your block. So we need to adjust that as well. You can't have, your artwork can't be overlapping. All right, so that one is set up now. And then down here at the bottom, these are all fine because we didn't touch any of that at all. Okay, so I'm going to select all of my background here and now I'm going to start auditioning some fabrics. So I'm going to go up here in my properties and into my fabrics tab and click on my three little dots and I'm going to go to my beach sewing and for the background on this, let's play with this. We'll just see what happens if we put some dots in there for the background. Okay, we're going to try that and then for the handle, just selecting over here from the sequence bar and again up to my fabrics, click my dots, choose and I've got gray dots on this one. So there's my handle. 
and then to my bag itself. So once again, properties, fabric tab, little dots, beach sewing, and I want to use this all over flower print. So when I did this, I actually did a fussy cut and I set this up so that I had a flower right in the center. And if you want to visualize that, you can use the little slider bars over here to adjust your X and your Y. And I'm just left pressing and dragging and you can see that I can move that more to the center. Or if you want, say, your red flower, you can move that into position. And then the Y is going to move it up and down. So I'm going to move it to about there. I'm going to say that that's good. Okay. So I think that the dots in the background are probably a little bit too busy, but that's what the auditioning fabrics is all about. You can just play with your fabrics and see what looks good. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to actually make these just the background. The white scissors is kind of what I use as my background on this collection. So there's all of my artwork set up. So I'm with my select tool. I'm simply just going to drag to select all of this and then I'm going to go up here. And so we're going to start building our workflow now. So I'm going to check my workflow and I'm going to change my seam allowance to 0.375 and then I'm going to auto build. And I'm going to preview. So basically what this is telling me is that this is doing it in three separate chunks. Well, I happen to know that I can do this in all in one hooping. This is telling me I have three separate hoopings. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to click off of here and I'm going to go up here to my reorder. And if I start on this side and work to my left, I can do this entire top piece in one section. Then I can add my handbag and then add my corners and I can do it all in one hooping. So to be able to do that, I'm going in here to reorder and I'm just going to tell it the order I want it to stitch. So one, two, and three, four, five, six, and then it doesn't matter which side you go to, seven and then eight. Either of those would have been just fine. Okay, so now that I have my order correct, I'm going to come up here to select. I'm going to select all this again, and I'm going to go to my reorder tool. And you can see now they're all in order this way, and you can see the order here as well. I'm going to change my seam allowance 375 and I'm gonna say preview and it's telling me invalid solution so what I need to do is actually group these together so I'm gonna select my top one and hold down my control key select my second one and say group and then my control key is still held down select the next one group and I'm just going to go down the list and add these all to the same group. And you can watch them build across here. And then when you get to the last one, it's the only one that's left. So you don't have to actually add it to the group. I think it will not even let you add that. So now I'm going to go to my preview. And there it is, all in one hooping. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna save this now. And this is in my C Dime Designs and then in my 2018 Block of the Month folder. And then this will create a folder. So this is my block number five handbag and the 375 is the seam allowance. I forgot to do it on the last block, but it's just to help me keep track of that I've got three seam allowance on this one. And I'm going to say save to this. 
And what that gives me is this is my stitching file for all of my piecing. And then I have an artwork file. And then the preview PDF, which is going to show you a picture of your block, picture of the stitching file, and then the step by step. These are, this is going to stitch first for all your placement, and then the right side up, and then all of your seaming and all of your tackings. Okay? All right. So. We can just close out of that, whoops. And then I can close this and go and set up my cut file. So here's my cut information. And once again, changing the seam allowance and I'm gonna apply that. And so this is gonna give you all of the parts that you need. And I have mine set for paper so that it will just um, automatically save out as a PDF so that I can cut my parts. Okay, all right, so then I'm going to save that. And I'm going to save it within this same folder that I just created. And I'm just going to call this cut, cut files, and save. And once again, so here are your patterns so that you can cut out your pieces all numbered. And then the preview, once again, an image of the block you'll be doing. And then this is going to show you each fabric and how much fabric you need for each section. And I just set up for one block. If you had set up for more blocks, it would give you that information as well. So those are for all your different colors. Okay. All right. So I can just close this out now. And then I can move over to my quilt embellisher to do the embellishment for this block. So here we are in quilt embellisher. And again, you'll see your My Inspiration Today page when you open up your software and your free design. So don't forget to download those. I am simply going to close that and open up a new page. And I'm going to go to my library and go to my handbag file. And here's the artwork that I'm gonna need for this. So I'm just gonna left press and drag that over onto my work screen. And then I'm gonna right click and tell it to center the origin. Okay, so in this and then, okay. So sequence view, so just move over to the sequence view tab and I'm going to expand this. Okay, so if we look at our image again, so I have stippling, all the white bits have stippling in them and then the bag has just an offset to the inside and then just a fun little motif along the handles. So that's what we'll be setting up now. So back to here. So I can set up this first. I'm going to ungroup this. So just click on the heading and then click the ungroup. So now I can get to this little guy. So I've selected my handbag and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to utility and create outlines. So this is what I'm going to use to get my offset borders. Create outline. And I want this to go to the inside and I want three repeats. And sometimes you have to just play with this. I'm going to say I want three eighths of an inch offsets and I don't want my outlines united. And I'm going to say okay to that. That was a pretty good guess. Okay. So there's your outlines. And if we expand this, you can see that that's all artwork. So I can just select that artwork and I can tell that I want that to be a run line. And I'm going to make that a bean and I'm going to give it a 4.0 stitch length. And I'm just going to say apply to that. And if we click off of there so you can see a little bit better. So it's going to 
if we run this, so it's in running in kind of an odd order. So the reason that it's doing that, let me go out of here and I'm going to back up and get this back to artwork. So here's your artwork. If you with your artwork selected, if you right click and tell it to break apart, you now have separate sections of artwork, which is really what we're wanting. So if I now select the header to select all of that and now turn this into a bean stitch, it will run the way that you would expect it to run. So once again, there's my bean stitch and my 4.0 stitch length. And if we go to our slow redraw, it should do them in concentric circles going all the way out instead of stopping and starting. Okay, so just remember if you have multiples, if you break them apart, they will stitch separately, which in this case is what we're wanting. All right, so that's our center. So now we want to put our um, embellishment onto our handles. I'm going to turn my grid on and I want to get to the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here to my run path and my snap to grid is on. So I want to go straight down the middle. So there's my first section and then here's my second section. Okay, so it's actually jumping from here to here but it's two separate lines. And if I turn those two lines a different color, it might be a little easier to see. All right, so there's my lines. So with those lines selected, and that also by using the separate colors, it breaks them up over here, so it makes it a little bit easier to tell your sections apart. So I'm gonna go up to here, and I'm they're already a run line, so let's go in and let's try the crazy quilting. And if I click on my little dots, it will give me my images. So this is where you get to just play a little bit and see how you wanna set this up. So let's try this one and apply. So that's a really, really small and stitch length that three, so let's try maybe 15. So that's kind of fun. If we zoom in on this a little bit, if I click off of that, it might be easier to see. That would be pretty fun. So a couple things to watch out for here. See how this is kind of running into down here? You might not want that. This is also running off the top. A couple things that you can do if you don't like that is you can go into your um, shape tool and you can just move this line up ever s just a little bit. I had to move the stop off of there and apply and so see how that just kind of moves it up a little bit. Same thing over here. You'll have to move your stop and start and then just scooch that up just a little bit and then move that back into place. Then you can say apply and we'll have to do that at the other end too because this may actually run outside of your hoop. Also, you can if you go into edit, you can do um, outlines and it will automatically take off the stops and starts. If you're if you don't want to have to move those. The stops and starts are still there. It's just a visual. OK. So I had kind of a squiggly line when I did that. And I think it was this one. And I'm just going to say OK to that and apply. Yep. And again, it's fine that those are just a little bit shorter because you really don't want them to run off the end, off, off your part. OK, I'm going to call that good. All right, so I've now got the embellishments on my handles and on my bag. Now I just need to do my stippling on the outside. 
So I can pick, I can kind of reorder these so that they're more in the same spot. And this really is just my artwork. My embellishments are down here, so you can see. So this is all artwork, and when I select it, that will select everything. So what I can do now, now that I've got all that artwork selected, is I can simply go up here and I can go to my stippling, and it will automatically turn that artwork into stippling, which is exactly what I want, although that stippling is a little bit tight. I like to get things done pretty quickly, so I usually... Oh, not my stitch length. I want to change my density. My stitch length, I'll leave at 3.5. But if I change my density to 5, can you see how that loosens that up a little bit? Which I think is probably closer to what I want. Maybe even 6. I'd say that's pretty good. Okay. So, now all of our embellishments are completely done. So, and if I'm just going to double check to see these are stitching in the order that I want them. So I actually want my stippling to stitch last. So I need to just drag it down here to the bottom. So we've got these. The first two things are artwork. And I can turn those off so that you can see. And then here's the embellishment for the handbag. Here are my handles. And then here is my stippling. Okay. So I'm going to save this file. So I'm just going to do file save as. And I am going to go up to my handbag file. And again, I'm just going to copy this name. So I don't have to type it all. I'm just going to select it. But I'm not going to overwrite that file. I'm going to change the name down here to EMB for embellishments and say save. Okay. So now I'm going to pull up. This is my piecing file, and I'm going to open that. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my basting stitch. So I'm just using my square tool from my artwork, my rectangle. And I'm lining up the crosshairs to this border. And I'm just going to drag that square out. I'm slightly off on the top here. So I'm going to grab this and just move. Sometimes you have to actually move it a bit away and then move it back into place. Okay. I have my stitch points on still. There, that makes life a little bit easier to see. And if I take off my grid, okay. So that's there. And I'm going to add a color. So I'm just going to come over here to my little plus sign and say add. And I'm going to turn this. This is artwork right now. But I'm going to turn that yellow. Because I want that to be a color not like any of the other colors in here. Just to make it easily identifiable. And then I'm going to turn that into a run stitch. And it's a basting border, so I'm going to make it a 4.0 stitch length. And I'm going to say apply to that. Okay, so now if I expand this, this is a run line. All right, so I'm going to go back to my embellishment page, and I'm going to select all of this. I can just drag, since I don't have my um, background turned on right now, I could just drag select this, or I could select from my sequence bar. I'm just going to left press and drag all the way around this and say copy and then go back to my block piecing part and I'm going to paste that. So now my embellishments are sitting on top of my piecing file so they'll stitch after the piecing gets done. So the one last thing that I need to do is I need to give myself one extra basting border that will hold my um, blocks in place in my monster block maker. So i am just selected my run line that I did before, my basting border, and I'm going to just say copy and paste, and then I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to move it down to the bottom. Okay, so this first, actually the last basting border is actually, you're going to stitch that first, 
and then it will leave all of your piecing information here in the correct order according to what you did in the first step in my block piecer. It will just make all your numbers line up better. Okay, so save that file again and then that's everything for the handbag block. Let's look at the pictures once again. So here's the actual stitch out. Here it is in a six block layout. And then this again, just an image of the block. I hope you have fun with that one. We'll see you again next month. Thanks.